Hey guys, I'm Lisa. And I'm Natasha. And we were wondering, are you free for coffee? Welcome, welcome. Hey guys. We have a fun topic today. Um, I don't know if you guys had heard this or not, but we're going to unpack it. Matthew Morrison, and you guys probably best know him from Glee. If you ever watched right. Glee, um, he was the teacher, super cute, you know, curly hair, blonde. You, if you see him, you know him. Um, he had been a judge on So You Think You Can Dance, which I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't watch. I haven't seen. I'm not a reality TV person and I don't dance. <laughs> so it's really not my jam. But, you know... It, Evidently, contestants dance and are judged and, you know, there's a winner. So while he was on that show, in the news, it was said that he got fired over a flirty message that he sent to a female contestant. So that was intriguing to me because I thought flirty. What does flirty mean? Right. And then, then I thought, well... That didn't sound that bad to me because it didn't say, you know, it was sexual. It didn't say it was, you know, very graphic or anything, just flirty, which that kind of was like, hmm. Well, then it comes out. And I, and mind you, I know nothing about his personal life at the time. I did not know if he was married, if he had a girlfriend, what his personal situation was. Just it was alleged that he sent this flirty message. That's why he was fired. So then he comes out. And in rebuttal, kind of, explains what happened. The, this contestant was evidently up for a job with um, a, a choreographer that he knows. Mm -hmm. And, and he he's was, known the choreographer over 20 years. Over 20 years. So, so he, he was, has a longstanding relationship with this choreographer. This person. Yeah. So he was recommending her for this job. Mm -hmm. So he, this is verbatim. This is what he sent her. Hey, it's Matthew. If you don't mind, I would love to get your number and talk you through some things. That was the text. That's it. That was it. Yeah. So because of that, the contestant said she felt uncomfortable and went to the producers and then he was fired. So we just want to talk about this, y'all. I just, it, it was, what's your take, Natasha? You tell your, you know, I think we live we live in a world now where there's so many crabs in a bucket. And if you've never heard that terminology, it's where one crab sees the light, <clears throat> excuse me, and they're trying to get out and all the other crabs are pulling them back down, pulling them back down. And that happens so much in especially things like Hollywood and dance. And I, I grew up in dance, not on that level. And it still happened then, you know, I'll never forget. I had a friend. What do you mean? Like the so -called competitive, friend, competitive. Like, okay. Yeah. I had a friend lie to me about an audition time so that I would miss. Oh my God. And it came out later that she's like, well, you would have won. And it was just like, wait, what? And see, so that, see why I that's, dance? that's that, <laughs> <laughs> that's that kind of like crab in a bucket mentality. And so because that is so rampant and it's such a dog eat dog world, it really saddens me that seemingly here's someone trying to help you out. Here's someone trying to help you out. I've known this choreographer for 20 years. I want you to think about this. He's known he's known this other person for 20 years. This man is married with two a wife, two kids. This choreographer knows his wife. I highly doubt he was trying to spit game at you. He was not trying to holler at you and involve family friends and involve that kind of stuff. That to me it's not a flirtatious message. It if, wasn't if to that me was either. what someone sent me flirting, I would miss it, guys. I would be I I would not view that as flirting or any type of advance or anything. And I think it's really disturbing that now I mean first off, he had to defend himself. Like my gosh, you put this man in the situation mm -hmm. where this could have damaged his family with his his children, his wife all behind him trying to help you. And he got fired. And he got fired. Yeah, so, so now it you're, affected you're, his income. It affected, yeah. yes, his income, for again, for his wife, for his children, for his family, behind something that is so, so small. I had a couple of thoughts. One, 
it didn't seem flirty at all to me. No. But then, you know, it's all about perceptions. So, so he read it and I read it just, Hey, it's Matthew. You don't mind. Give me a number. I'm going to talk you through, through some things. Nothing sexual, nothing. It, it didn't even sound like there was There's attraction. There's no window there. But then in her mind, it might've been, Hey, it's Matthew. Right. You know, if you don't mind. So, you know, it, that's a perceived But whatever happened thing. to wearing your big girl panties and just saying, no, thank you. Yeah. And what about in the whole I'm uncomfortable thing? You know, it reminds me a lot of the stand down laws. Yes. That, you know, with gun, different states have those, which the whole premise is if I feel threatened in any way, way. I can shoot you. Right. Now, you might not have threatened me. It was just my perception. Yes. So you could have just been standing there. So you know there what? Those glasses, and be black. Look, those and glasses it, look threatening. Me. <laughs> that's it. So, you know, and that it whole, is, it's very similar to that. Because yeah. I'm well, uncomfortable. Well, so it's I like, kept reading, guys, and I'm like, so where's the flirting? Right. <laughs> you know, like, I kept I kept reading it, and I'm like, and you know how you read a whole article, and then you're like, okay, I don't get it. And then you move to another article. So I've read Vanity Fair, and i read People, and I'm like, well, they all have the same quote, but I'm not... Is this the flirty message? Because if this is it, baby, this ain't flirty. Uh, that's what I thought <laughs> I at like, all. I was like, this is not. At all. And if this is the case, I would be fired from my job. My God. Like, I would have been fired a long time ago, Lisa. For sending a message oh, like that. Oh, my gosh. I call everybody, honey. Yeah, what was I she call- uncomfortable <laughs> about? Like, what was it? Where was the discomfort? Like, what? Um, and at what, what point word, is it okay? What, what part of it made right. you feel uncomfortable? So, um. That was my thought too. And then the other thought, you know, playing devil's advocate, I was kind of like, okay, so she was a contestant. He was a judge. So there's a little inequity there in terms of, you know, he has a position of authority and she does it. So that there can, that can be a um, perceived, you know, disadvantage or advantage, however you look at it. Um, But on the other side, I thought, that type of business, no matter who you are, you're always looking for the next job. You know, yes. you, you, Tom Hanks, you make a movie, you got to be looking for the next movie. You have to. I mean, it, it, you know, that's just the nature of their career choice. So in fairness to him, if he was recommending her for a job, and surely after this gig, she going to need another job. Hmm. Everybody will. All everyone, of them will. Everyone so it's not like you don't have that luxury right. of like, let's wait till this is over. And then this is something that's happening now. So if you want it, I mean, they'd hire you now, even though right. it might not start till later. Right, right. So in fairness to him, that's kind of just how it, it how it played out. Right. It, the timing might've been off in hindsight on his part that might, especially now that we know what we know. Right. Probably should have waited till after, given how I mean, this person is. At this is. point, if he never helped another performer in his life, I could blame, blame him. him. I could right. blame him, right? Because this, I mean, to have to defend yourself against something that is so minuscule. Now, I have not read anything, guys, I, and I want to put this out there. I have not read anything that would indicate that there were some interactions in person. That, oh no, I, that, that would says, pair with this. Uh, he never met up. Offset with this person. Right. So we, we do know that. It was just this one message. So there weren't other messages. There there hadn't right. been a right. lot of Because you get what I'm saying, Lisa. So like, it was a one and done thing. There was no nothing else. This was it. So, so they never met up outside of work. Right. This was the only thing. And, you know, there so was that no, just blows my and mind, there was doesn't it? From the other judges or any, any other contestants that were willing to speak up that, you know, that would make you believe like, oh, you know, he followed her down, followed her around with puppy dog eyes. And you, do you know what I mean? There was nothing else. It's like, it's literally. Or hey, even at his other jobs. Because, right. you know, now, we know with the Me Too movement, most of these men that are predators, they've there's, been predators. Yes, there's a history. So once one says something, oh yeah, he's like that yep, on this, this other yep. job and on this other job he did this. And so we have not heard anything about Matthew doing that in, in fairness. So, you know, he nothing's been alleged about him, you know, as far as we know. 
So this was a one and done, never met her outside, never tried to meet her outside, just sent this one message about this particular job. So I think it's unfortunate. And I guess the other thing we were asking, because if if men, if it, say he was, just say, now we we agree. Natasha and I agree that we don't think this was flirty. Mm-mm. We don't think he was trying to come on turn anyway. But just say he was. Is this is pretty mild? Very. Like, even if he was trying to hit on you, and this is what he did, which we're saying is his game is off. But if he <laughs> was, like, is that so bad? You know, I know he's married and stuff. Now say he wasn't. And, you know, he liked a girl and he just took his, you know, shoot his shot. And that's, you know, he sent her a message. Is that a bad thing? Right. And and should that be categorized in t- kind of a me too thing? I'm c- uncomfortable. Right. So to the point where this person loses their income. No, but I mean. Loses just, their job. Okay. So if men feel like they can't do that. If you you were always in fear of losing your job, your income, being accused of something that you didn't do, right? So would they? So do you just not? You just don't take a shot. Is that? I mean, I mean is that kind of where we are? I guess that's what it I'm seems asking. Seems like it, unfortunately, so, especially in a workplace environment. But yeah. then you know, a lot of couples, and you guys know them. Come on, that met at work. Come that's on. that's how people meet a All lot the of time. time. Come on, where else are you going to meet people when you're that age? Well, but then okay, <laughs> even if you don't work with someone and you sent that message, could a person still be uncomfortable? I mean, is it all about workplace environment right. or do you think it could be just in general? Well, the problem with comfort is perception. That's that. That's the problem with all of this. Like we live here in the devil's armpit. It is just hot, literally as hell. It was 104 here, guys, yesterday. And we do have a lot of listeners that don't live in Texas and they probably can't fathom. It's, well, no, it's hot all over the country. So wherever well, it y'all is, are, but, y'all will probably, but it's, yeah, it's hotter here. Though. 104, you know, I mean, we're not Las Vegas hot, but my God, it's yeah, hot it's as hot. hell. And my point is when I go visit my aunt in Colorado, she's like, Oh, it's so hot. I am like, this is breezy to me. I'm like, it's only 92 in August. What do you mean? It's perception. Now to her, She's just like, oh, you brought the Texas with you because it's 92 degrees to her in August. And she's like, uh, like, I mean, heaven forbid it hits the 90s there in June. She's, she's going to flip out. It's all about perception. That made her uncomfortable. But would that make me uncomfortable? No. I, okay. And the thing is, if I felt like it was inappropriate to give this person my number because I'm a contestant and because they're a judge, I would have simply said, no, thank you. Yes. Or no, nah, I'm good. You know, you don't. I'm or not. What even, is this concerning? It, the way he talked, um, I think it, it, it sounded like. Now he didn't say this, but I'm thinking they might have already discussed it because the way he said it was, I was recommended for a job. We both right. knew da da da, and the way he was saying, or perhaps this choreographer was interested in. Someone who, where she met those qualifications. Hey, I'm looking for a a dancer that is this, that is that, that blah, blah, blah. And so he's just like, hey, maybe get, you know, let me get your number. I can talk you through this. I I just, I don't see this as far. I don't don't, don't, see it. But, and the whole thing about uncomfortable when, and I'm not saying that someone should make you uncomfortable, but it shouldn't be, we're just a blanket statement. I'm a, I'm uncomfortable can make someone lose their job yes. can get somebody killed really yeah. you know w- w- when in terms of gun yeah guns um you're being comfortable is the utmost thing right like, as long as you're comfortable well imagine how uncomfortable he is now that he lost that income right it just I, I the whole <laughs> thing just kind of yeah w- sit wrong with me and it it, it feels so so much of this feels so gossipy in a way because it's yes, it made her uncomfortable per her own assertion, right? Per that that's how that's how it made her feel. 
But at the same time, he has a truth. And if his truth is, I'm not flirting with this girl. I reached out to her because yada, yada, yada. How is his truth not just as valid as her truth? And honestly, honey, you're a contestant. You're a passerby anyway. I mean, that's the only flaw I saw in the whole interaction. The note or anything was just the judge contested dynamic. Dynamic. That's kind of a... um, a sticky wicket with, with this. It That's is. the only thing that I see that could be construed a certain way. Because if she felt like, you know, if I don't talk to him or don't do what he asks or don't go for this job, then he's not going to vote for me. Now, you know, that right. could have been what she was uncomfortable about. We don't know. It doesn't say. Um, and, and they maybe, never specify. And I'll say this. There, there very well could have been some policies kind of surrounding what you can and cannot do in terms of contestants. But then if it seems like the statement would have been more along the lines of this person was terminated for violating our well, rules there's somebody, concerning contestants. There was, it didn't say that, but it did say something about production going against production something. something. Okay. okay. So that, you know, that very well could have been it. But we got to talking about this and about guys shooting their shot. And we, it was the Kardashians, both Courtney, and you know, Courtney just got married to Travis Barker. Travis Barker. Mm. And then Kim is now dating Pete Davidson. They both approached them, the girls approached the guys. So we were thinking, is this a trend? Is it just that men, because of Me Too, because of incidences like this, where they just feel so intimidated, they don't want to offend anybody, they don't want to make anybody uncomfortable, so they just don't take a shot at all. Yeah. So if you think that there's even a possibility (laughs) that you guys could hit it off, that you have to take the shot. So that's the question, too. And we, we're wondering, we want to know from you guys. Now, for me, I, you guys, I would be so backwards. It would be like I was back in junior high <laughs> with, you know, your best friend passing the note. Do you like Do me? Do you like, I like me? You. Check yes, no, <laughs> yes. or maybe. <laughs> I like you. And that's how I would be. I'd be so backwards with it. So I I guess I'd just be alone. And I, I did. I asked my husband about that. I'm like, okay, is this what it's come to? And he was like, yes, in some ways. And and that and he told so me he's like, and it is because that's not my husband's cup of tea. That's not that's not his cup of tea. And he's not like super old fashioned or anything like that. It's just not his cup of tea. It's it, it just it just isn't, Lord. That that'd be a whole other episode if I went into that. But that just is not. Yeah, that's not his cup of tea. But like he, we were because we kind of got in this conversation and we were like, okay, so when you hit a certain stage in life, where your your meeting people is different. It's very unlike school where the tides are kind of always changing. People come in, people come out. You know, school school's very different. There's always going to be someone new, someone old, someone new. But when you get past that season of your life, where do you, where do you spend most of your time? At work. That's where most of your connections are made for a lot of people. Oh, so many people meet their partners at work well and also meet good friends at work so my thing is this person who is to say that this was an advance but it it turns into where you don't even want to ask someone something you don't even want to say anything unless you know some offices do have explicit right uh rules about fraternizing yes with colleagues right so um, and then even then, though, there's ways around it. They right. go talk to HR. You, you know, right. we've all known people that that's happened to right. or have heard stories. So there's always a way around it. But I know bazillion people. That's how they met. Yeah. That, well, and, and I and I, are, I, are together now. And the married. thing is, even in this case, kind of jumping back a bit, if he was fired because you favored a contestant and thought she was talented, non-sexual, non romantic mm-hmm. just platonically so it still stinks because it got twisted into flirty messaging it didn't get twisted into favoritism you know so the gossip element of it is still there and that was kind of what my husband and I were discussing 
he was like, you know, now all it takes is somebody saying they didn't feel comfortable. And, and I think and that's so unfortunate. Not that I, I, I want victims. Yes. And I, I say that in quote, victims. I don't see this, no. that she was victimized. And the worst part is, this is what has made it so difficult for people who have truly been victimized to come forward. Or to be believed. Or to be believed because of all of these minuscule, very remedial, very, very opinion based and just incidents. trivial. Trivial. To me, I, this is just so. I'm like, you silly goose. So you're contestant. You so didn't have to happen. And somebody is like, hey, I think you'd be good for this. And you say, no, you're a contestant. The whole purpose is showcasing your talents. But th- we don't know. that. That's where I'd like a little clarification because I don't know if they discussed this before. If this was the first time. It was ambiguous. It wasn't really saying you're up for a job. So if, that, if right. this is his first contact with her, he could have clarified a little more. He probably uh, and, but that's why he asked for the number right. and then I'll talk to you about it. So it's but a no, I do. There. I believe it's, we're it's stepping still, into a world where men have been put in a position where if they say anything, it's so easy for it to be misconstrued as sexual harassment. Like it's it's like it's like we've done too much, right? Yes. Like we're not finding the we balance. overcorrected. We overcorrected. We overcorrected. Like previously, it, it was so under addressed, and so it needed correction so badly. But now we've overcorrected. Yeah. To the point where now all it takes is I didn't feel comfortable, and then that's it. And it's like, whoa! Now wait a minute. Just like, keep the car on the road. Don't I always say that, y'all? Listen, we end up in, in these ditches. We do not stay in our own lane. But Just don't. okay, you guys, I have I have to recant something. Okay, I mentioned the Kardashians, and y'all know I have grown children. And back in the day when my kids were at home. They were big fans of the Kardashians, and I was not. I just didn't get it. I <laughs> just did not get it. In f- my defense, I have girls. I have girls and boys, but I had girls, and I didn't feel like the Kardashians were... I wanted them to idolize or look up to or be, you know, these are not role models for y'all. Like, please don't go this way. You know, that was kind of um, my thought in that defense. Well, years have passed and, you know, they're, they have a new show on Hulu. It's still kind of the same thing. Reality thing. Not, it's not as sensational, I guess, Mm -hmm. not as, um, I don't know, gossipy and whatever, but I have to, can't because I'm liking them y'all. And I think the beauty of it is we are all, we all were young and dumb. We just are. A 20 year old doesn't have the same experience, you know, capacity to do anything like you do when you're 40. We do. You just don't. Mm -mm. So, but the beautiful thing about this is that we have seen the evolution of these women. We we saw them in their young and dumb stage. And the sad thing is, I mean, we've all done things like that. Maybe not sex tape things, but things. But theirs were so public. Yes. They lived it in a very public way, and, and which is unfortunate for them. I mean, that, but that's the life they chose. But, you know, anyway... But now they've evolved, they're mothers, they're business women, and they've gotten it together. So it really was a lesson for me that for all of us, this is how life turns. We've all done that. We've all have evolved and mm-hmm. we were one way and we're a different way. But it's beautiful to Thank actually God. see it on, yeah. on, on TV. And we've seen their evolution, seen how they've grown they're not making the same mistakes. And I just have to recant. I just have to recant because I think it's a lovely thing. They've all turned into lovely young women. And I'm with you. I, you know, I have a, a friend, I've mentioned him on the show before. Uh, Markel is a friend of mine that's a therapist. And he, lo- I mean, just 
loves and has for years and i'm just like Ugh. my daughter whitney does too yes Whitney <laughs> loves him has all that's why i i've kept up with them, right just because when she was home she was into it and, and she's still into like, it Ugh, like, Ugh, you know whatever yeah i was i, just, I, was I didn't just get it. About it i did get it but i i think one of the main differences and and we kind of joke about this just within friends that i went to high school or middle school with we're always like oh thank god instagram and Facebook and Snapchat and TikTok did not exist. I don't know that I don't. I was just as dumb as these people. Oh, as, we all as, were. As all of us were. That's the reality. Yeah. The only difference is there were no smartphones. There were no. I mean, you know, think about it, a, a smartphone is basically a pocket camcorder. Because when we were kids, that's what it was called a camcorder. You know, people now don't even know what camcorders are. But I mean, this is like walking around with a Polaroid, a camcorder, all the things. Plus internet. You didn't make your mistakes plus a platform. in public. In public, That's yes. The Back and then, did. you could go off to college or move to another place or join the military or do whatever. And it just kind of fizzled. Because there wasn't as much evidence. Well, that's true. <laughs> it just kind of fizzled. That's true. But they live in such, you know, the limelight. It's such a public thing. And they were indoctrinated into this at no fault of their own, because even as children, they were in the limelight because their dad was this attorney in this big iconic case. So they've, there's always been a bit of, you know, a flashlight on them, a spotlight on them. And so they, the only difference is their mistakes were just more publicized, but I have, I must admit, I have learned over the years, they are so much more than those mistakes. And we all are so much more than our mistakes. Well, it's a great learning lesson. I it think is. it's a, it's a, it's hopeful. So young people who are going through things, you can see, look, you, you get through it. You'll come out on the other end. Yeah. It won't always be like that. Right. You, you'll make mistakes, but you'll learn and grow from them. So I'm recanting and I As think I on. might even love the Kardashians now. You do. So you Kim, do. Kim, call me. <laughs> you do. You do. You know, I I am just an entrepreneur at heart, and I don't think that's something that's hidden on our show at all. I mean, we this is our brand, so this is one, but it's one of multiple things that we do. And you just can't knock their hustle when it comes to being right? female entrepreneurs. Like, oh my gosh. It's they really are. And they are And Chris. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Yeah. The OG of OGs. Yes. Do you hear me? She she yes. is the original Ruffles. She's Ruffles. I was just about to say, it, baby. She <laughs> can she spin it. Spin she can draw spin it. into gold. And that's just it in life. Like you have to pivot. You have to you have to learn to ebb and flow and to pivot and to change. And she is really goals when and it what, comes to what that. testimonies of strength. Like yes. with her, with with yes. Ruth, with Bruce slash Caitlin, with you know with going through that, yes. and then just there, and, there's and so I, many. This is my thing. That didn't just happen overnight. That that is years of turmoil for her. Yeah, oh, I mean, sure. if you really think about and it, trauma and trauma for and her, trauma. And, and, and if just, you've ever been through, let's just say a bad breakup, you don't even have to have been through a divorce. Well, there have been a lot of bad bad, bad breakups, breakups on the show, so yeah. we've seen that. If you've been through a bad breakup, imagine what she out on went the other through, side. and then trying to navigate this with her daughters, with with I All mean, and, and I know I know she doesn't just have daughters, but I know I think they only have daughters together. Her and Bruce, right? Yes, that's why she's thought. got one son. She has one son. I know, but yeah, yeah. Everybody else is girls. Everyone else is girls. So I'm just like, no, no, no not nothing against you, Rob. I'm not saying because I I do know obviously that she has a son, but I just think about like some of the things that her daughter said and like the makeup thing with one of her younger daughters. She's like, well, how does he have makeup? You know, trying to navigate that like. That is so much. And then managing to keep it all flowing. Together and keep it saying your right oh mind. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> you know, a lot of people yes. lost it for way yes. less. So they're just, um, we love yeah. y'all. And we're, yeah. um, I apologize. I do too. Uh, for I whatever too. I said in the past. But, you know, like I said, just um, in fairness, I was raising girls and there's just some stuff you just don't want yeah. your kids and to it was, do. And it was a reminder, you know. Like we always say, just keep on living. Yeah. And it was a reminder that as I have kept on living, 
maybe I was a little off on that, you know, and that's, and that's another and we thing have a little too. more grace for people. Yes. As you age, you, you just have you grace do. for people and what they go Because I'm so through. glad this did not exist, girl. I don't need some of my And I'm stupidity. glad to see him come out yes. on the other side. I am. Because you know what? Some folks stay stupid for the sake of right? staying stupid. And we can at least say. Say young and dumb is different than old and dumb. That's oh. the worst, isn't it? Old and dumb. <laughs> and we we have seen. I know some. I know, I do some, know some. Where I'm like, baby, you should yep. have passed this 20 years ago. <laughs> and yet here we are. Right. So I I agree. I Yeah, I think they're a testament to resilience. Resilience and just, man, they're, they're pretty badass female yes, entrepreneurs. We love y'all. Okay. On to Sexiest Man Alive this, this week. week. Okay, who do you have? I'm trying not to re-choose. I'm picking George Stephanopoulos. Okay, that when you said George, I thought you were gonna say Clooney. And I was like No, I've done I've done him. I was like, you've done him. But George, um, he's a cutie to me. Now you know he's my jam, the kind of smart, nerdy guy. And I love he and his wife together. He's married to Allie Wentworth, who is a comedian. She's an author. If you see her, you know, she's a blonde. She's very funny and goofy. And um, they are so sweet together. They have two daughters, uh, grown daughters. You know, they're in college, I believe. So he's just a cutie. He's on Good Morning America. He's a political commentator. Just very smart, intelligent, but... With a sense of humor. And I think he's a cutie. I'll take that. So I'm going way, way different this time. But this is a character. Nothing against him as a real person. And no, they're not animated. Because I I know know you always think this. But Stranger Things. Hopper. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, he is cute. I love Hopper. I don't know why. Oh, you don't like the guy, though? I don't know. Like, I mean, I have no idea who the hell David Harbour is. That's who he's played by. The, the actor's name is David. Harper. Oh, I think he's cute. But he's cute. I, I love him well, on I Stranger Things. Well, I think the Things. guy is cute. Now, on Stranger Things, he's cute. But I, I, li- I, think- I like him on Stranger Things. But yeah. you know what? I You guys know I can only do so much television. Like, yeah, I'm just maxed. So I have she's, seen. She's got her shows. I do. And, and she, I'm, I'm maxed out. can't venture out. I can't. I've only seen three or four episodes of Stranger Things. Okay. Well, I know they're like seasons in, and I have fun. Well, the new season and, is is out, yeah. and I've watched a couple, and I can't. I have to watch them in the day because it's yeah, it's real. As the kids kind of are getting older, older, it's kind of like Harry Potter. It gets more intense. Yes, so it's very intense. So I can't do that at night at sleep. Yeah. So and oh, news! I have a new grandbaby, a new grandchild. That's right, we do. Hartford Blair. And we're calling her heart. And she is so cute. Precious. She's super cute. Just a doll. So congrats, Connor and Hillary. Yes. Yes, she is. She's super cute. And so we have been kind of on the lookout and waiting and everything. Grand baby um, lookout. Oh, we should just we yeah we should have just did that. We didn't. I mean, sexiest man alive plus baby. That's a lot of cuteness. Yeah, it is. That's a ton. I don't know though. The name, their name, they picked is so sweet. So so sweet. Adorable. It is. And I mean, perfect nickname built in. Yeah. Perfect nickname. Perfect. Perfect. Oh my goodness. Okay. Loves. Thank you for pulling up a chair and joining us for coffee. Please subscribe to are you free for coffee podcast, wherever you are listening. We hope that you enjoyed today's episode and find joy in the little things until next time. Network.